Hey guys, welcome back to another video. You ever come up with what you think is a great idea only to realize later that it was someone else's great idea that had inspired you? Well, then you're in the right place because this video is completely inspired by Brian over at the Smuggler's Room, who last week put out a great video on how he made a Star Wars themed light switch plate cover. And while I was planning this week's video, I had to call an audible and switched up to this project, only to then realize that Brian had just done it the week prior. Well, without further ado, here's my take on Brian's take on a Star Wars themed light switch plate. Enjoy. I was recently sent this SculptFun 3D laser unit to review, so this seemed like a good project to test it out on. Before I could get started, I need to focus the laser to use with this 3mm sheet of MDF. So I loosened the two thumb screws on the back of the laser housing and with this small spacer I could set the focus. This was a really quick and foolproof way to do this crucial step, so that's a huge plus, especially if you're new to laser cutters like I am. Now I know that most people don't have laser cutters, but you could just as easily use common tools to complete this prop. I had already imported my design into Lightburn, which is the software recommended for Mac users, and after adjusting the settings, it was off and running. This laser really isn't designed for cutting dense material like MDF, so there was a bit of a learning curve to figure out how to cut the material without burning the edges too badly. But once I determined the right combination of speed, power, and the number of passes needed to completely score the MDF, I was able to get consistent, repeatable results. Because this is a lower wattage unit, this process took some time, but for the sake of the video, I've sped it up, although it is still pretty cool to watch. Once it had finished cutting, I removed the board, popped the pieces out, and gave them a light sanding to remove most of the burn marks and a quick coat of primer to seal the MDF so that it wouldn't absorb the top layer of paint. Now, this wouldn't be a Star Wars themed switch plate without a Greebly. A quick test fit of this one that I 3D modeled and printed, and then I can start my assembly. To bond these pieces, I'm using some CA glue. A few drops should hold these parts together just fine. For the smaller vent pieces, I noticed there wasn't much surface area for glue without it running down into the vent openings. So I quickly dabbed it off and instead I'll smear the glue on my work surface and then rub the part over it for a cleaner application. Once all the parts are glued, I'll set it aside and can get started on the metallic paint for the top greebly. This was printed in resin and will be base coated with satin black airbrush paint, followed by a coat of chrome all-clad 2 lacquer. I used a satin finish for the base coat because it makes the chrome paint look a bit more like aluminum, and because I was out of my aluminum lacquer paint. I set the greebly aside and it was time to lay down the base color on the switch plate. I recently found this great blue color from Krylon and have been looking for any excuse to use it. A few passes of the blue followed by my trusty shop hairdryer and then it was time to mask off the part and paint the white stripe. You'll want to make sure that your paint is thoroughly dry before doing any masking otherwise you risk peeling up your base layer of paint. Whenever I mask off parts, I like to paint the base color over the masking first to help seal up any small gaps in the mask that I may have missed. This isn't foolproof, but it definitely helps to get really crisp lines. Some gloss white for the stripe detail, a bit more help from the hair dryer, and then it's time to peel off the masking. With the paint handled, I can glue in the greebly and move on to weathering, starting with one of my favorite paint chipping techniques, a silver sharpie. 
This technique is so forgiving because there's no brushwork or masking required. The only drawback is knowing when to stop and making sure to keep it random. Now, this next step didn't really work as I had expected to, but I filmed it so you get to watch. I thought that a small amount of pewter rub and buff would help create the look of multiple degrees of weathering, but in the end, it just looked a bit flat to me. What do you think? Leave a comment and tell me if you think it worked. Next up in our weathering pass was some raw umber oil paint. Now normally this would have been very fluid and easy to push around the surface of the part, but for some odd reason it dried very quickly. I can't tell if there was a reaction between the oil paint and the spray paint, but I immediately regretted this decision and should have sprayed a clear coat down before doing any weathering. And since I was already at odds with the weathering, I decided to double down and introduce some burnt sienna to give it just a hint of rust. It was at this point that I decided the white stripe would need to be freshened up. So I quickly masked off the piece again and dusted the surface with some gloss white spray paint. Now that's better. A final pass of matte clear coat to seal in all the weathering, and this switchblade is done. Now I just need to install it. Well, there you go. That's my take on Brian's take on a Galaxy's Edge themed light switch plate cover. Be sure to check out Brian's video if you haven't already. Like, comment, and subscribe, but most importantly, go make something.